Sorry, we started at five o'clock. So, uh, uh, start over again. Oh, okay. I'm going to start all over again because I messed up a couple of things. Okay. <laughs> that I can usually hit. It must be those, it must be those bushwhackers they gave me down there. <laughs> yeah, I went down to the floor of Bama and they made me drink these bushwhackers. <laughs> and anyway, they, they bushwhacked me. Oh, okay, let's see. I'll try to do another one that I know the words to. Oh, okay, here's one. I wrote this song and uh, do y'all know who Delbert McClinton is? Yeah. He's a great singer and he, he liked this song. But I played it for him up in New York City at the bottom line because I was up there playing with somebody and he was playing there. But see, he forgot about it. He never did record it. So, uh, but anyway, some other people recorded it, but, but nobody famous yet anyway. So that's another one that's going to maybe make me a lot of money. One of these days. Anyway, so it's a story, a true story about my granddaddy who was a midget, but you're not supposed to say midget. <laughs> He was altitudinally shallow. <laughs> anyway, and he was about, he was just a little old guy about that tall. And uh, he, he kind of looked like a munchkin from, uh, from that same movie, you know. Uh, anyway, so, um, but anyway, he was a very interesting guy, so. And he was a good friend of Carol King also. <clears throat> and she taught him this right here. My old granddaddy was a ladies' man. He never chased them, they came to him. I never kissed him till he said with a smile. I just try to keep a low profile. <laughs> Tell me. 
answer I just try to keep a low profile But some mighty good advice bigger than my granddaddy, but I'm still a little kid, but anyway, I'd say, granddaddy, and, and, and he'd go, what, son, and I'd say, can I borrow $10, and he'd go, sorry, I'm a little short, he would say that, and so one day, he fell off a ladder picking strawberries and broke his arm, and uh, but uh, we used to have some good conversations about music because he played music too. And he played a little, uh, a little tiny guitar. It was a toy guitar because he couldn't play a big one. But he taught me how to play some guitar licks and he, he taught me how to do that. That girl. <laughs> George Benson would go, that's all he can do. <laughs> anyway, so this is another verse. There's really a long guitar solo in there, but see if I stop playing rhythm and start playing a solo. I don't know, it doesn't yeah. sound exactly right. But, no, oh, but, okay. favorite bands of all time is the Beatles. Uh, and so one of my big thrills that when we were um, doing the, um, the box ops thing is we were up in New York City and staying in the Americana Hotel and the Beatles were doing a press conference there. And um, our press agent had uh, one extra press pass to go down and and see the Beatles at the press conference. And so uh, we actually drew straws for it, and our lead singer won. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, so he got to go down, and he could have met the Beatles, but he he just was kind of shy, and he just stayed way back in the corner, and he didn't, he, he just, you know, watched. He didn't go up to meet him or anything. Uh, but um, when our song, the letter was on the charts for six weeks or something like that. Anyway, it was number one. And the Beatles, I think it was Hello Goodbye, was number eight. <laughs> so we got a, so I got a chart somewhere at home of us being number one and the Beatles down here. <laughs> so, anyway, so that was fun. Anyway, so uh, we never did get to meet them. But anyway, this is one of my favorite songs that George Harrison wrote it. And when the Beatles first started, he wasn't a very good songwriter. And the other, other well, John Lennon and Paul McCartney kind of, well, I don't know, they kind of made fun of him and sort of kind of made him feel like he wasn't, you know, up to their level. And then he wrote this song, and then he wrote another great song, and then he wrote another great song, and another great song. So, but, but he was about, I don't know, four or five years behind John and Paul when it came to writing great songs, but he caught up. Anyway, okay, this is... Whoops, wait a minute. See, my guitar's voice changed too. <laughs> okay. Doc Watson. Yes, sir. And uh, the first thing I ever learned how to finger pick when I was a kid was this song I learned from Doc Watson. And I don't remember all the words, but the words are not, uh, they're kind of strange anyway. Anyway, so, uh, so if I sing the wrong words, it'll kind of be like singing the right words. Anyway, it's called Deep River Blues.
Let it rain, let it pour, let it rain a whole lot more Cause I got them deep river blues Well, I got a gal four feet tall with her feet in the kitchen And her head in the kitchen and I got them deep river blues Well, my old gal, she's a good old gal in 1968. So we recorded the letter in 1967, which was the Summer of Love. That's what they called it, remember? And then, then we recorded the, um, the Cry Like a Baby in 1968, which was the Summer of Penicillin. <laughs> and then, uh, then, uh, then uh, 69 was the summer that they walked on the moon. Somebody did anyway. And I saw them. So we were playing out in Milwaukee when they walked on the moon. And um, we were playing at this thing called, what was it? I don't know. It was kind of outdoors. Anybody been to Milwaukee? There's a big park on the, I guess it's the lake. Is it the lake? One of them big lakes up there. Anyway, so we saw them walk on the moon. It looked like a little bitty answer. What was I talking about? Oh, yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> Yeah, this is one we recorded in 1969. Well, I think about the good little Oh boy, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to change something right here real quick. I'm going to tell you a story. Well, I, I'm going to tune my guitar down. That way, I can hit all the notes that I can't hit now. Because my, my voice went wacky because all them bushwhackers. So, so I'm going to tune the guitar down a whole step. So this string right here is going to be a D instead of an E. This is very fascinating, I'm sure. So, um, okay, I'll tell you another story if I can tune and talk at the same time. Okay, so we used to tour with the Beach Boys a lot, and we got to know the Beach Boys pretty well, and which was really cool, because they were kind of our heroes in a way. A lot of fans were, but um, so the Beach Boys were real nice. And uh, so at the end of a Beach Boys tour one time, they invited us to come and visit them. Carl Wilson and Dennis Wilson, they both invited us to come and visit them in, in Los Angeles, and so. So Dennis lived on Malibu, and he lived on the beach, and he had a, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't get to go, but, um, because I was stupid. Uh, <laughs> so there was a girl in Memphis that I really wanted to go back and see, so I missed uh, this whole trip, but anyway, uh, that was, I'll never do that again. <laughs> I'll never not go any, uh, anyway, so, um, so a couple of guys went, and they came back early, and 
I thought, wow, that's weird. They were out visiting the Beach Boys and they came back early. I thought they wouldn't even want to come back home at all. So, uh, so I went up to, actually our road manager was from Baton Rouge and his name was Cleve Dupin. He went to LSU and he was a big old guy. And he, um, he said, no, we came back early because there was some weird guy at Dennis's house named Charlie and he had these weird girls with him. Charlie oh, Mason. Gosh. Yeah. Oh. So it was Charles Manson. Oh, sorry. And, yeah. No, but but this is what happened. Uh, he, um, Alex, our lead singer, was staying there, and um, he went down to some little. He was going to walk down to a, a little grocery store or something. I don't know. And uh, he was going to get something. And Charles Manson asked him if he'd get some milk for him. Of course, all he knew was this guy named Charlie. He didn't know it was Charles Manson. So, uh, so he uh, went down to this little store, and he had a whole bunch of stuff to carry because he was walking, and he didn't get Charles Manson's milk. Anyway, <laughs> so, so he came back, and, and he said, uh, he says, where's my milk? He said, you, he said, you'd give me some milk. He says, oh, man, I, I had too much stuff to carry. I just couldn't carry all that. And Charles Manson got mad at him, and... Uh, you know, he gave him one of them. Charles Manson looked like, you know, <laughs> that crazy look. Anyway, but uh, but he didn't really know he was Charles Manson at the time. He just thought he was weird Charlie. But uh, anyway, so the situation was so weird that they all, that him and Cleve came back to Memphis early, and then, you know, talking about this guy, and you know, it sounded pretty weird to me. So in December of '69, we were over in London. And we walking down the, uh, the street, and all this came on the news about, well, uh, it was on the news a couple of days earlier, but you know about the Sharon Tate murders and all this stuff, horrible stuff. And so we're walking down, walking down the street, and there's that, the first picture of Charles Manson that, where they caught him, you know, and there was a sheriff, and he was, you know, two big sheriff guys on each side of him, and they found him hiding in a little cabinet up like that because he was a little bitty guy. Uh, Anyway, so they saw that guy, and they just about turned white and fell out because they had been living in the same house with him and, and those same girls that killed those people. So it was a weird story. So it's, uh, anyway. So I still ain't got my guitar. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, so that's one of the good stories. Okay, here's another good story. Get closer though, but um, okay. So we were over in this is when we were in England too. This is one of my better stories. So um, we got our tour. We were supposed to tour about ten different cities in England, and this was in '69 in in the summer. No, the winter, December. Anyway, so we stayed in a hotel right across from from Hyde Park, and it was. Uh, really cool because you could look out the window and see all these people in Hyde Park and see people pushing these little prams, they call them, with kids in them and see the guys in their bowler hats and all this kind of stuff walking around. And, uh, and so they took us to rehearse uh, for the tour and um, we went to some, I don't know what part of London it was because I didn't really know anything about what part of London was where, but we went to some different part and we uh, we went to a little school, it was an elementary school, and school was going on. And we walk into this school and we walk down the hall and there's these little kids in class and we thought, what a weird place to rehearse. And so, <laughs> and we go down to the basement of this elementary school in London and, uh, and there's this reggae band, you know, they were all guys from the West Indies, but they lived in London now. And then, and the name of the band was King Ollie and the Raisins. And so, uh, and evidently they had been doing what the Jamaican guys are famous for doing, uh, so, because they were all just kind of, <laughs> you know, like, oh man, you like our gear, it's Marshall gear, it's the best gear, man. Anyway, so we had this weird uh, equipment we had to play, and it was actually like a toy organ, like you would, you know, just, the organ was just like a toy organ, but it had a big... Leslie speaker cabinet that was broken and the speaker rotates but the speaker would hit up against the side of the cabinet it, was, uh, it sounded like an old washing machine you know? 
And then the amps were Marshall amps, but they weren't guitar amps, they were PA amps. And it, it was so strange. And we said, well, we've got to get some different equipment because this is not going to work. And so we went, and there were, <coughs> there were no cell phones or anything like that, so we had to try to call our manager in Memphis. And uh, it took us a long time to get a hold of him. Meanwhile, our uh, bass player, Harold Cloud, is is out in the blue van with the Jamaican guy. <laughs> so uh, we uh, finally got a hold of him and he turned and talked to the promoter and turns out they they wouldn't get us the equipment we asked for, like we specified a few things and we wouldn't even, they wouldn't even give us our third choice or anything. Anyway, so what happened was um, Harold had already left for Ipswich in the blue van with the Jamaican guys because they didn't know we weren't going to show up for the show. And so our bass player shows up in this little place called Ipswich in the south of England and he, with, this, with the Jamaican band and he's the only guy from the box ops that are there. And so he, um, he had a pretty rotten time actually because <laughs> he never knew why we weren't there. He was the only guy there, so it was pretty weird. And then, uh, and then me and Swain Schaefer went to France. But that's the next story. But, um, but that's a good one. Okay, it's almost in tune now. It's not used to being tuned down this low, so I gotta be real careful about being in tune. But maybe I can hit the high notes now. Because it won't be so high. Because every time you change one string, the rest of them move around a little bit when it's okay. Okay. Um, okay, I'll do another box type song. I know, we, I'll do the one I started to do and I found out it was too high. That's a good idea. Okay. Good job, let's make it Yeah. <laughs> Baby, pass. 
Christ Mill song. Okay, this is one of my favorite old hymns. It's okay if you sing along too. food to eat and something to drink and I'm going to talk to people if people want to talk to me and then uh, then I'll come back and do some more. You're going to tell your Jimi Hendrix story too? Yeah, I'm going to yeah. tell that. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that. In the letter. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so. Yeah. Well, we'll take a break. Everybody know where the bathrooms are. If anybody hadn't.